what did that what did that verse just now say? We're above all people. We are above what? We're above all people. We are above what? We are above all people. We are above all people on the face of the planet. That's this right. is the Bible. All right, so he brought out the Sabbath day, right? What day is the Sabbath day? Saturday. Saturday, all right. So you know on Saturday you're supposed to congregate, right? Right. Right. So you know all these things, but you're not doing it. Why? Yeah, Mr. Okay, hey, so you're dealing with other doctrines on top of the Israelite. Okay, cool. Give me, um, give me Ecclesiastes 12, verse 12. Let's understand something, all right? When we keep in the Most High Law's commandments, we got to this thing in the Bible, all right? If you go to any other um, um, religion like Quran or these other things, they're going to corrupt you, all right? So they're going to mess up your understanding, all right? Now, let's get this. Read. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 12. And further, by these, my son, be admonished of making many books. There is no end. Many books, okay? We're, when you study this book and you study Quran and you study the book of the dead, that's many books. Right. It's going to corrupt you. You see what I'm saying? You're going to be like, hold up. Hey, well, the Bible said do this, but the book of the dead said I can do this. Well, you know, the Quran said I can do that. Hey, that's, hey, that's confusion, all right? Our Father is not the author of confusion, all right? So read that again. And further, by these, my son, be admonished for making many books. There is no end. And much study is weariness of the flesh. Much, and much study of those other doctrines is a weary of the flesh because it's going to take you off, all right? Now, do you have a girlfriend? Are you looking to get married sometime soon? Okay. How, okay, how would, you go, uh, um, how would you go about it? Can you have sex before the wedding? You know that, all right? Okay, so you know that. Now, do you deal with anger or anything like that? Uh, what about the food? What do you actually eat? Like, do you eat pork, um, lobster, shrimp, any, a little bit of everything? Okay. Because I was fishing to actually find out, like, what it is. Because I see that you up here, but you're like, yo, man, I'm just in, like, a daze. Yeah, so the food, the food is number one because our, because our food have been defiled, but it's certain food that we cannot eat, all right? Now, let's find out. Leviticus chapter 11. Leviticus chapter 11, verse 7. And the swine, though he divide the hoof and be cloven-footed, yet cheweth not the cud. He is unclean to you. He is unclean to you, the swine. You know what swine is, right? Pork. So... Leave that thing alone. Don't pick it up. Don't even look at it. Because you got to think, the pork, the pork meat is the nastiest meat that there is on the market. Right? It do not sweat. So if it eats something toxic, it just stays in its body. And it, um, and it embeds itself in the meat. So when you consume it, you're eating that chemical or whatever parasite it has. Right. You understand? That's nasty. You know what I'm saying? Don't eat that thing, all right? Now, the shrimp, crab, and lobster, we're going to get into that too. Read that. Yes, sir. Leviticus chapter 11, verse 9. These shall ye eat of all that are in the waters, whatsoever hath fins and scales in the waters, in the seas, and in the rivers, them shall ye eat. And, and all that have not fins and scales in the seas and in the rivers, and of all that move in the waters, and of every living thing which is in the waters, they shall be an abomination unto you. Okay, an abomination is a terrible thing. Now, I want you to think about this. Fins and scales. Think about all the seafood that we used to eat, because I used to eat that one time too, okay? Now, do shrimp have fins and scales? Nope. Nope, so you can't eat it, right? Uh, mussels, do they have fins and scales? Nope, so, hey, so we can't eat it. Oysters, do they have fins and scales? No. So we can't eat it. Crab, lobster, do they have fins and scales? So we can't eat it. But our people will eat that thing wholeheartedly and don't even think twice about it. But I want you to think about this. Would you eat a cockroach? No. 
Wake no, you wouldn't eat that thing, right? Oh, why the hell you eating shrimp? That's that's the same thing that a cockroach is on this land. A shrimp is like that in the sea. Right. It's the same thing. But our people will eat that thing. And when I learned that, I said, oh, man. You mean to tell me that I'm eating a roach? Yes, you're eating a roach. Right. Do right. not eat that thing. These things are abominable. The most high say what? That they're unclean. All right? Now. I, would, hey, I don't want to ask this question, but I know I'm from the country, so I got to ask it. Do you eat um, squirrel, um, possum, raccoon, any of that stuff? Okay, cool. Hey, I had to ask, all right? Now, of course, you know, um, you know we can't eat dogs and cats either, and that's some of the stuff that the Chinese be cutting up in some of their food. You know we can't eat that stuff, right? Okay, cool. Hey, but let's get the scripture just in case. Go to verse 27 to show you that anything with a paw, you cannot eat. Hey, um, hey, shalom, my brother. What's going on? So what we're going over now is our nationality and things that we can and cannot eat, okay? So these are some of the things that we can eat and some of the things that we cannot eat. Now, we're going over things that we cannot eat. So anything with a paw, just listen up, read. Leviticus chapter 11 verses 27 and whatsoever goes upon his paws among all manners of beasts that go on all four those are unclean to you whosoever touch the carcass shall be unclean until evening so that's an unclean thing so dog cat no uh, what? Possum, raccoon, any, hey, any of those things we cannot eat. Right. Why? Because it has paws, all right? So the Bible is very, the Bible tells you exactly what it wants you to do, all right? I don't see how people confuse reading this book. Right. It tells you exactly what to do. Right. Now, let me ask you, do you eat um, shrimp? I'm allergic. Hmm? You're allergic? Okay. What about, um, what seafood do you eat? Salmon, okay, cool. You, you can eat that. What else? Seafood Yeah, seafood. I'm going to ask you about the other ones later. Because we got to make sure that our brothers and sisters are right. So that's why I'm asking y'all this question, all right? I, 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 I know it seems random, but I'm asking you this because I want you to know that there's certain things that we can and cannot eat, all right? So go ahead. What about lobster? lobster. Have you ever tried it? Is good? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. What about crab? Crab, uh, crab legs? You know when they have the, um, the crab crack? Crab cake. Hmm? Okay, what about crab cakes? Nah, uh-uh. Um, what about oysters? Mussels? Now, I'm going to read something for you. And I want you to, hey, now... The reason why he looked at me like that, smiling, because he already know what the Bible says, right? So we're going to read it for you, just so you know now. Um, read that. Leviticus chapter 11, verses 12. Whatsoever had no fence, no scales in the water, that shall be an abomination unto you. So, if it don't have no fins or no scales, it's an abomination to you. Which means the Israelites, it's an abomination to us, okay? Right. The so-called right. blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. So, do a lobster have scales and fin? I want you to think about it. Do it have scales and a fin? Scales. Uh-huh. Like, you know, like how you um, scale a fish? Do it have scales? It don't have scales, right? So, you cannot eat that. You cannot eat that. What about, um, what does we say? Crab. No, you can't eat that. What about oysters? You can't eat that. What about mussels? You can't eat that. All those things that we thought that was good is not good for us. The Bible is telling us this. Because would you eat a roach here on land? So you wouldn't, so you wouldn't um, kill a cockroach and go eat it? Put like chocolate on it and eat it? Okay, cool. So why are you eating um, shrimp and all the rest of these things then? Because those are compared... Just like the roach is the just like the roach is um is the roach on the land, they are the roach of the sea, right? right? They clean up the sea, right? Now, what about pork? Do you eat pork? pork. Yeah. Pig. 
No? Okay, good, good, good. All praises, all praises. So, those are some of the things that we don't supposed to eat, all right? Now, let me ask you this. Do you have a girlfriend? You looking to um, get a girlfriend? Not right now? Okay, cool. Don't do it, all right? And I'm going to tell you why. Make sure that when you do this, you go through a process, right? Because the Bible is based on marriage, all right? Marriage is honorable, all right? Do not defy yourself with somebody that you will lay with and that you have to stay with for the rest of your life. Do you understand? Because this is what the Bible says. I want to read to you what the Bible says, all right? I just want to make sure, I just want to make sure that y'all know, know this. Come on, bring that out. The book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verses 4. Marriage is honorable in all. Marriage is honorable in all. All right? The most I actually deem a marriage a great thing. But what happens if you do decide to go and sleep with a sister before y'all get married? Let's go to Exodus. Let's go to Exodus. Let's get it. Let's get it. Because we want to show our brothers and sisters just what the Bible says up. Uh, about that because guess what we trying to actually show y'all better right now you see what i'm saying read that yes sir exodus mm -hmm. exodus chapter 22 verse 16 and if a man unties a man that is not betrothed and lie with her they are two single people all right they are together their girlfriend and boyfriend in this sense read he shall surely under her to be his wife. And he lay with her. He must surely endow that woman that he lay with to be his wife. Now, what if you don't like this woman and you just wanted it just as she wanted? Guess what? You have to endow her to be your wife because you lay with her, okay? So just be careful out here. Hey, Shalom, brother. What's going on? All right, all right, all right. So what we actually is going over is a couple of the laws, but do you have anything? Yeah, because he, he, he say he wanted can we enlighten him on something about the Bible that he don't know already. Okay. Do you have a wife? Do you have a girlfriend? Okay. Okay. Hey, so with that being said, right? Okay. What happens? What happens if you actually lay with a sister that is not married? What happened if, okay, you single and you lay with another actually sister, sister, sister that is single? Single, right? No, she's single, right? What must happen if you actually do do that? Before land, what are you supposed to be according to the Bible right. get married? Right. But you know how we do, okay? We will go and lay with the first and then we'll deal with the consequences last. What must we do now? Repent. You repent, what else? You said show you something that you don't know, so hey, so I'm okay, okay, hey, so what I ask what I ask my brother right here is, okay, two single, um, two single people, a single man and a single woman, they lay together. What must happen next? Okay, read. Exodus chapter 22, verse 16. Uh -huh. And if a man unties a maid that is not betrothed and lie with her, two single people, okay, read. He shall surely under her to be his wife. Now the, now, the Bible says, this part right here, he shall, surely, he shall, surely. When the Bible says shall, it must happen. It must happen. You must marry that um, sister. Right? So now, what you know is now, that very next person that you lay with, hopefully you don't, hey, you actually go through the process of getting to know her, all right, um, to ensure that you're not getting a demon on your hand. You understand? Because some sisters, they put up a front first, right? And then you actually meet the real them later. You, you see what I'm saying? So ensure that you don't do that thing to yourself because the Bible says that you must surely endow that woman to be your wife, all right? Do you understand that? All right, now, let me ask a question. Um, any, um, any other doctrine that you deal with, like besides the Bible? Or, um, are you in Egyptology or, you know, okay, just read from the Bible. Okay, so now let me ask y'all this. What is your nationality? I, um, I know you know, right? What is your nationality? But what tribe are you from? That part I don't know. That part? We're going to touch on it. Okay. 
my religion? I'm yeah. In, I'm, I'm in, uh... You're I'm ethnic. Where I'm from? Mm-hmm. Uh... What would you call yourself? I'd say... I'm a bit, uh, from, uh, South America and, uh, Nigeria. My, my, my okay. So, you So... So, what is the nationality of your father? My father? And I'm at, um, and I'm gonna show you why I asked that. Numbers. 118. I'm not sure. You're not sure? Okay, cool. The reason why I ask that because I don't know um I don't know if you have heard it, but many many nations actually base their nationality off of the woman, right? To me. Some people actually base it base it off of the woman. It's supposed to be based off of the man because the man carried the seed. That's why he's so important. You understand? Read. Numbers chapter one verses eighteen. And they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month. And they declared their pedigrees after their families by the house of their fathers. By the house of their fathers. All right? So a pedigree is what? What is a pedigree? Just think about dogs. When you say, hey, what's the pedigree of that pit? What are you saying? Yes. What's the bloodline? You know what I'm saying? So that's how we deal in the Bible. You find out the pedigree of your father, it will let you know who you are. You see what I'm saying? Like when I was in the world, I um I used to call myself a so-called black black um black man basically, right? So, but the Bible says that I am an Israelite from the tribe of Judah, right? So if y'all look over here, and we're gonna go over who are the Israelites in Deuteronomy. But do you see your tribe on there? The so-called blacks cover the Negroes, um, the African-American, right? And you go Benjamin, what? That's like your Jamaicans, you know what I'm saying? And you go Levi, that's the Haitians, and so on and so forth. So what would, um, so what would be your tribe? Judah? Judah? Okay, cool. Now, let's get to the Bible and let's find out how we know this. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1 and 1. Well, go to Deuteronomy 1 and 1. Let me show y'all something right, right quick. Because in the book of Deuteronomy, who was Moses speaking to? Was he speaking to everybody or was he just speaking to a certain nation of people? Just to God's people. Just to God's people. All praise to the Most High. Come on, let's read it. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verses 1. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel on the side Jordan and the wilderness. In the wilderness. So he was just speaking to these 12 tribes. Just these men right here, all right? Now, go to Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. Let's see something about these men, though. Because this is something that this, um, this is something that society don't teach our people, right? The Bible's about to tell you something right quick to build um to help build you up. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 6 uh -huh. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God uh -huh. the Lord thy God have chosen thee to be a special people He say a special people Do society teach that we're special? Let's be honest Hell no. Nah. Society don't say anything good about us Anytime you talk about a so called black Hispanic or Native Americans, hey, they say they're drug dealers, these are gangsters, uh, these are uh, whoremongers and baby daddies and baby mamas. That's it. That's it. But the Bible said that you are a special people. Read. A special people unto himself, uh -huh. above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Stop. What did that verse is not said? I want you to say it on the mic. What did, that, what did that verse just now say? We are above all people. We are above what? We are above all people. We are above what? We are above all people. We are above all people on the face of the planet. That's this right. is the Bible that we're reading. The Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you, because ye were more in numbers uh -huh. than any people. For... He were the fewest of all people. Right. So, the Most High did not choose us because we were the multitude that was 
all over the earth at the time. No, he didn't choose us for that. He just chose us because guess what? He just love us. That's just what it is. You see what I'm saying? Now, go to Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. Let's find out why. So if the Most High chose us to be special, right, above all people, are we above all people now? No. So what happened? We serve all the gods, idols. Right. So what is that? When you serve other gods and the Most High God told you to what? Have no other gods before me, right? What were we doing? But what is another word for it? It starts with an S. What's another word? Huh? Sinning. Sinning. For our sin is the reason why we live in these conditions now. It's the reason why our people don't know who they are. It's the reason why we, we get called African American, nigger. You a gangster? You a baby daddy? You're no good in this world. You're nothing. That's what we hear the majority of the time. You're nothing. The world don't like y'all. The world never did like you. Right. To me. But that's a lie, though. Because the Bible says that you are special and that you're better than everybody in the world. You see what I'm saying? So these are the lies that they feed us, right? To me. But we got the answer right here. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 15. Uh -huh. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day. And remember, it said all the commandments, not some. Christianity pick and choose which one they want to do. Now, nah, he said all the commandments, which is the reason why we are in this predicament now. Because our people pick and choose, yeah, I'm going to do that one. Thou shalt not commit adultery, now. Nah, I ain't doing that one. Uh, yeah, thou uh, shalt not steal, I definitely ain't doing that one. Um, thou shalt not covet, I ain't doing that one because, hey, our people is, the reason why they rob and steal and they do all this stuff is because, uh, it's because of what? They are covetous. They, they, are, they are looking at their brothers got this wife or have these items and they want it. So the only way to get it is by either stealing it or killing or doing any one of these things to break these commandments. So covetous is a terrible thing to have. All right? What do you think about the two commandments when Jesus came? Love thy father, our God with all our heart, mind and soul, and love thy brother as we love ourselves. That, that don't cover it all? Yo, those two do. But you got laws under that. You know what I'm saying? You got those men too, which is, you say what? Love thy God with all thy mind. Love thy God with all thy mind, right? Think of the first four um, commandments, right? The, the first four of the ten, right, covers that. Love the most high with all your heart, right? Now, the um, second one. But I believe if you love God with all your heart, mind, and soul, you're going you gonna to do it all. Like you're going to do him all. Because you're not going to do nothing to hurt him because of him. Because you're striving to please Right, him. right. So now you're starting to see how it actually works. What is the nation? Nation is men leading by example. 